This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 764, 20 Key Questions on Motivation and Habits Answered, part three by Leo Babauta of zenhabits.net, and I'm Justin Mollick, your personal narrator, reading to you every day, including holidays and weekends, just like an audiobook, but free of charge. Mostly for blogs, but sometimes from books, and always with permission from the websites. And thank you to Four Sigmatic for their support. I've now had almost all of their drinks, and I still haven't found one that I don't like. These are mushroom coffees, superfood blends, and mushroom elixirs. It might sound strange, but mushrooms have been studied for centuries and different kinds have different health benefits. So Four Sigmatic created these drinks. I love them. I just ordered like three months worth of them. I'll tell you more about that at the end, but you can get 15% off your order now by using my code OLD. And the link is foursigmatic.com slash OLD. That's F-O-U-R-S-I-G m-a-t-i-c dot com slash old. And I also have it linked in this episode's description. And now today's post is part three of three. If you're new here, I'd recommend listening from the beginning, which is episode 762. But without further ado, let's finish up this post as we optimize your life. 20 Key Questions on Motivation and Habits Answered, part three, by Leo Babauta of zenhabits.net. Number 15, how do you determine when you've reached a minimalist lifestyle? It's not a destination, it's a mindset. You're a minimalist once you decide to have less and do less, when you decided to stick with enough and not go for more. I consider myself a minimalist, but I know there's much more I could do if I wanted to. I could go live in a cabin in the woods in Alaska and be off the grid. I could use or eat nothing I didn't make myself, but that's not realistic for my life so I just reduce what I own and use and do and slowly change over time. Any lasting change should be done slowly and gradually anyway. So think of it not so much as a destination, but a long-term process and you'll improve over time. You're never there at that minimalist lifestyle, exactly, but at the same time, you're always there if your mind is in the right place. Number 16, If you could offer only one piece of advice about beginning, changing habits, starting fresh, what would it be? Start with one little step at a time. That's obvious, but you might be surprised at how many people try to change five to 10 habits at once to start afresh. It's too hard to make drastic changes like that. Changes made gradually don't seem hard at all. For example, instead of giving up meat altogether to become vegetarian, you could just eat some vegetarian dishes on different nights of the week. That will soon become normal as you learn new recipes and adjust your taste buds. Then add more meatless meals and so on. And each step along the way, you'll adjust and that will become the new normal for you. Over time, you'll have made great changes, but each step along the way is a small one and not difficult at all. Number 17, how do you sustain self-motivation when you suffer a setback towards your goals? I always try to enjoy what I'm doing. If there's a setback, that's not a problem because the progress I'm making isn't as important as doing the activity, running, reading, writing, cycling, whatever. And because I enjoy the activity, I'll keep doing it even if there's a setback. Just realize that setbacks are not the ending points unless you let them become so. They're just a little stone on the road. Kick it aside, go over it, walk around it, but just keep walking and enjoy the journey. Number 18. Besides your own book, what one book would you recommend to help someone find their motivation? I've never found a single book that will motivate someone. Books can help inspire, but there's too many to choose from. I'd probably recommend The Art of Happiness by the Dalai Lama or any book by Thich Nhat Hanh. But one of the books I recommend most that really reflects how I try to approach things is Slowing Down to the Speed of Life by Richard Carlson and Joseph Bailey. It's not motivational, but if you try the techniques in the book, you'll find that you'll easily create the habits you want with a minimum of stress. Number 19, what do you do when you used to love your work but passion has been killed by work-life balance issues? There are two approaches I've tried and recommended. The first is to try to reinvigorate your work to find new appreciation and passion for your work. This is the easiest method from one point of view, but at the same time, isn't always possible if you truly hate your job. To do it, You have to look at the things you enjoy about your job, to appreciate things about your job that you take for granted, and to try to change your job so that it's something you love doing. You can do that 
by creating projects and work for yourself with buy-in from your boss or team that you're excited about. The second approach is more drastic, but for me has been so much more rewarding, changing jobs to something you really love doing. This takes a little more time and more courage. I suggest you start doing the job you want to do on the side, even for free at first, until you get good at it or spread your reputation enough that you can charge. Eventually, as you gain confidence and skills, you'll wanna take the plunge and quit your regular job. Either way, you'll need to address the root problem. You need to find balance in your life and time for things other than work. Workaholism is a problem when work becomes a problem, meaning if it's sapping you of passion, you need to make a change. Set limits, stop working after a certain time and schedule some non-work things that you enjoy. Exercise, hobbies, doing things with friends or family, creating in some way, reading, anything other than work. Find the balance that works for you. It takes time and experimenting, but most of all, it takes a consciousness that you want to change your life. Number 20, how have the types of habits you have cultivated evolved over time? Great question. As with anyone, my habits have changed since I started Zen Habits. I didn't just cultivate some fundamental habits and then stop living a static life. I'm always trying new things out and my philosophy is always evolving as I learn. So some of the things you might've read when I started Zen Habits back in early 2007 don't quite apply to what I'm doing today. A good example is back in those days, I was all about productivity in the traditional sense, knocking out tasks as quickly as possible, getting things done, cranking widgets, making the most of every minute. But as I've evolved, that has become less important to me. I've simplified And now I focus on what's important, on enjoying what I do, on creating, rather than on getting so much done. It's a more human approach to work rather than an industrial drone type of approach. In fact, I think it becomes simpler over time. I don't stress out about my running as much and instead just go out to enjoy the run. I don't worry about waking early so much, although I definitely enjoy the early morning and try to wake early so I can read and work in the quiet before dawn. I don't keep track of all my tasks as much as I used to, so that at any given moment, I might not have an up-to-date task list, but I know what I want to focus on right now. Quote, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence then is not an act, but a habit. Aristotle. You just listened to part three of the post titled 20 Key Questions on Motivation and Habits Answered by Leo Babauta of zenhabits.net. Thank you again to Four Sigmatic for sponsoring this episode. So I just ordered like a three-month supply. I like it that much. I used to drink coffee, but I found that it messed with my stomach a bit, so I cut that out. And recently I tried Four Sigmatic. Found out that they have drinks with different kinds of mushrooms and some have caffeine, but people say they don't have the same stomach issues as with coffee, so I tried it. And that was true for me. No stomach issues at all with or without caffeine. Not only that, but it tastes great and you get the health benefits of different kinds of mushrooms. I've been trying to avoid people because everyone seems to be sick lately and I might just be getting that cold or whatever it is now. My nose is starting to run. I should have ordered that chaga elixir earlier because that's supposed to help with immune function. I did try one packet a while ago and it was great. You can drink it with hot water only or they have other recipes like cozy chaga if you wanna make it a little different. So it takes only a minute to make, super easy, very tasty, and you're drinking mushrooms, which is pretty cool. Try it out and get 15% off with my code OLD. You can use that at foursigmatic.com slash OLD. That's F-O-U-R-S-I-G-M-A-T-I-C dot com slash old. And I have it linked in this episode's description. But since I might be getting sick, I'll leave it there for today and try to rush out of here to get some rest and probably have some Four Sigmatic coffee. Have a great weekend and I'll see you tomorrow where your optimal life awaits. Hey, this is Dan from the Optimal Finance Daily Podcast, which is a lot like this show, except more focused on personal finance. Justin handpicks the best posts he can find from blogs and authors like Ramit Sethi, Mr. Money Mustache, and more, and I read them to you five days a week. So if you enjoy this podcast, come on over and subscribe to Optimal Finance Daily too. And together will optimize your financial life. 
You've been listening to Optimal Living Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us. And remember, your optimal life awaits. We'll be right back.